Thanks for joining us. Now, one person has died with three others wounded at Yendi in the northern region as fresh violence broke out on Thursday ahead of the funeral of Yana Yakubu and Dani. The clashes occurred after a group of young people pelted the entourage of the chief of Sagnarigu as he arrived in the town. Other vehicles entering Yendi or leaving that township were stoned and windscreens were smashed at Sohi, a suburb at the, at the outskirts of Yendi in Tamale. Now, uh, this included a police Navara pickup. Two rooms in two separate houses were also burnt in the violence. The wounded are currently undergoing treatment, but the police PRO for the region, DSP Yusuf Tanko, has said the situation is under control. We will be hearing from DSP Tanko later in the bulletin, but uh, let's now go on the phone lines and speak with Hashmin Mohammed, who has been monitoring the situation. Hashmin, Tell us, what's this link? What happened between the time the chief of Sagnarigu's uh, entourage was pelted with stones and when we saw rooms burning and people being shot? Hashmin, if you yeah, can hello. hear me, great. Hashmin, we want to know how the situation degenerated from the time the youth pelted the chief's entourage with stones? Well, the place is generally calm at the moment. Security have increased their presence at various points in the Yin township itself. Before you get into the main Bewa palace, there are a lot of security checks. They will check and then process you before you can finally access the venue itself. But at the moment, as we speak, the uh, chiefs from the Andani royal family are holding a crunch meeting as to, to determine the fate of the funeral. At the same time, the, the, the Northern Regional Security Council are also holding a, a separate meeting. They are meeting with the Municipal Security Council. I have with me uh, the spokesperson for the Andani royal family, Mr. Bashar Dabali, and he will run as to why the chiefs are in a court position at the moment. Many thanks to you, Mr. Basharu, the bandit, for getting us on. You are nice here on Joy. Now, what has triggered this latest court meeting by the chief? Well, uh, in the petition submitted to the mediation committee, they requested for the keys of some customary homes which was constructed in 2014 and 2015, but the chiefs are with the regional security council. And some of the chiefs, particularly the custodians of the land, are supposed to move into some of these houses before the funeral commence. So the chiefs are still in a crunch meeting, as you rightly said. They are waiting for the regional security council to come so that they will request for the keys. If the keys are not released to them, I'm afraid the funeral of late Yana and then Yakubu cannot be proceeded. But if that happens, then that is going to be a huge cost to a lot of youth and people who have come all over the world to witness this event this morning. How do you intend addressing that? Well, definitely, uh, they were already aware before it was sent to them for the funeral uh, performance of uh, late Yana Yakubo, they told them, pending on the release of the keys to the Kugana, and then the vacation of the Bolong Lana at the Mbadugus Palace. So they are all aware of this particular issue. So something strange to them. Okay, thank you very much for your time. So Daniel, as you can hear, those are... These are some of the fresh obstacles at the moment in Yendi, as many people have gathered for the funeral of this Yana Yakubu and Right. Thanks, Hashmin. But so from your conversation with the spokesperson of the Andani royal family, um, let's get this clear. Has the funeral started? If not, when is it starting? The funeral is of this morning. They announced is that the police announced that the funeral will commence pending information that that the regional security council is going to release keys to them keys of the custom
primary homes so that all the various custodians of the bank custom can occupy those homes for the class to start. But at the moment, it appears that can only be confirmed after the regular city meeting, a finished their meeting with the municipal city council. And that's what we are all waiting at the moment. A while ago, the regional city council arrived on a, on a helicopter, and they are currently also in a meeting at the municipal assembly. Is there any member of the Andani royal family in that meeting of the regional security council? Well, at the moment, that meeting is purposely for briefing from the municipal security council before they will hold another separate meeting for the Andani royal family itself to determine the fate of the funeral. Now, we understand there was some firing of musketry this dawn at 4.45 a.m. to signal the starting of the funeral. Does that mean that at that point, after that firing of musketry, they had to halt the processes? Yes, well, if they do that, the uh, main activity for today is the ritual shaving of the hair of the sons and daughters of the late Yana Yaku and Dane. If that is done, that's the most paramount in, 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 accordance, in accordance to tradition. If that is not done, then that means that the funeral itself has not yet started. Right. Uh, we know that the Mbadugu house, uh, which had been allegedly broken into by some members of the Abudu family, um, which were, of course, from the Bolin Lana, has become a bone of contention. The Andanis point at that and say, if that house is not vacated, they will not continue the rights. What's the current status of that uh, situation? At the moment, it appears the Abudu royal family are still in occupation of that particular house. And that has necessitated the Andani royal family to hold a bunch meeting, demanding that the regional city council release those customary houses, including the Mbadogo house, then for them to continue their process. So that's what is keeping the process at the moment. Thank you very much, Hashmi Mohammed. When the situation changes, of course, we'll come back and find out if indeed the funeral rites and the uh, ritual shaving is, is able to continue today. Uh, let's stay a bit longer with this story because we've been speaking with the PRO for the Northern Region Police, DSP Yusuf Tanko, who assures us that security has been intensified uh, following yesterday's situation. We are still investigating the circumstances that led to the shooting and killing of one person and two others uh, sustaining injuries and some two rooms uh, bent in two separate uh, houses. But what we understand for now is that the Sanergu Na was making his way from Sanergu to the Biwa Palace, where a section of Yendi, uh, 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 some persons unidentified though, uh, pelted his convoy with stones. That was when the guns were fired. But we don't know who fired the guns as of now and the, the motive behind the firing. Uh, investigations are on, on underway to try and identify the perpetrators and ensure that they are dealt with according to law. Hmm. But as soon as this happened, uh, the police moved in uh, with the military supporting to quell that particular situation. And we patrolled from last night, heavy patrols, till this morning. And as we speak, we have not taken our legs off the paddle. We are still intensifying security whilst we uh, investigate to find the exact cause and also get the perpetrators arrested. Mm. So what's the current state um, there now in terms of security? Yeah, the security situation there is okay. We have strengthened our presence on the ground so that we'll be able to ward off any unforeseen uh, happenings that might thwart uh, this particular funeral that is starting today. You know, a lot of effort has been put in this funeral by the police and supported by the uh, military. RESEC has also done a lot. Government has also uh, put in a lot of effort and resources 
and we will not allow anybody at this last minute uh, to do anything that will disrupt the successful uh, beginning of the second leg of the funeral and uh, to, uh, uh, to its conclusion. So we are doing everything possible to ensure that we maintain security on the ground, give the needed security to the uh, leadership of the Andani, who are supposed to champion the funeral, to do it. And we also give security to mourners and also persons who want to come to Dabon and witness the tradition. And that is exactly what we're going to do. Away from that situation, and of course, we are still monitoring uh, the situation at Yendi in the northern region, and we will be telling you when the funeral rites are able to officially begin. Let's come back to Accra. And lawyers for the NDC General Secretary, Johnson Esiedu Nketia, are urging an Accra High Court to throw out a case of defamation filed by Chairman of the Audit Service Board, Prof. Dia at Jemaine. Uh, they say the writ fails to state in the Ghanaian dialect, Chi, the utterances Mr. Esiedu Nketia allegedly made which Prof. Dia contends are defamatory. The NBC chief scribe had claimed in various media interviews that Prof. Dia, whilst serving as Auditor General, churned out fake audit reports resulting in his membership of the Institute for Chartered Accountants, Ghana, uh, being withdrawn. Prof. Dia wants damages slapped, saying the allegations are untrue. Joining us is Joseph Akable was in court and now reports. Lawyer Nomesinu, in moving his motion, asking that the case be dismissed, said uh, by failure to state in three the exact utterances attributed to Mr. Siedu Nketia meant that the court did not have the benefit of what exactly it was dealing with. He says this failure will be unfair if the court proceeds to deal with the translated utterance without the benefit of the exact words attached to it. He explained that there are various cases in which the court had held that a case could be dismissed without a reasonable course of action. In this instance, he explained the reference or the failure to state in three meant that there was no reasonable course of action, for which reason he thinks that the case should be dismissed. But lawyers of Professor Duya disagreed with this particular point that was made. Uh, they said that Mr. Shodin Ketia had already filed documents in court saying that he was prepared to prove the allegations he had made. A lawyer, Gary Nemakuma, told the court that if he disagreed with the translated utterances attached, he would have stated that, but rather by stating that he was prepared to prove what had been said, it meant that the utterances were not misleading and the translation represented what exactly he had uttered. It is further indicated that they were willing to attach the tree to it if the court is minded to request that they do so. The case has been adjourned to January 23, where Justice Bernasco is expected to deliver her ruling on the matter. Reporting for joining the Law Courts Complex, my name is Joseph Akable. The chairman of Just Pong Group of Companies, Joseph Xiao in Japan, has denied the $74 million government's bins contract was cancelled due to his company's inability to deliver. Five subsidiary companies of the Just Pong Group were awarded the contract two years ago to supply 1 million waste bins and 900,000 waste bags or bin liners to district assemblies. Responding to the issue of cancellation for the first time since it broke this week, Mr. Xiao in Japan said the contract period elapsed naturally. DNA uh, is waste management. So we started with dustbin distribution in the year 2007, not 2018, not 2016. As part of, we, we brought in free bins. I could remember that in the year 2007, we launched the free bins. We imported 100,000 uh, beans from China. We imported it up and started distributing to houses, of which you could attest to it. So in the, in the quest of government to solve this problem, in the year 2015, when they embarked on the National Sanitation Day, government was moving from regions to regions talking about it. So we have a discussion. They call us the expertise and say, look, for what we can do very simply to solve this problem, is getting a dustbin in the houses. And so, what happened was that, look, government now need to buy the dustbin, but he hasn't got it. And so, what we discuss is that, okay, we Zoom Lion with not us, but our partners and our sister companies can look at it and see how best they can uh, facilitate it. So, we, we thought of having a pre-finance year of 
two years. So the bean Sorry. will be purchased or manufactured, distributed, insured for two years. If you have a copy of the contract of which I can give you a copy, the terms in the contract is manufacture the bean or purchase the bean, distribute it all district. In even when you get to the district, it must get to the houses because the district hasn't got a warehouse. And then when you get to the district to try that, at least you are able to make sure that you have education. And then the bin is insured over. So within that period of two years, if any bin, bin is damaged, you don't have your cost. And that is the cost of the $60. Now when you Google, you can Google beans. Beans, that means you can have some even at $20. It is the virgin material you mix and the recycle. You can have it 80% recycle, 10% and then when you, it's like plastic chairs. Some plastic chairs, when it breaks down, you can see that it's just brittle. It will just break away. So you can have some shed 10 CDs, some shed 150. What we were producing before we were guaranteeing is it's about 80% virgin material. So that the two years term, our financiers will say that if two years is not guaranteed, what a problem. Now when, in the year 2017, uh, there was a media speculation that Zoom Line have supplied beans to the districts and the beans were there. It was just a, 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 a kind of a, a mischief, an idea out of the mischief and a way to just tarnish the companies. But we did not supply beans. Today, we are all testing that not a single bean was just supplied. So what we did was, well, let's discuss with government how best one this media speculation it was under investigation. We're all aware at the CID and what has come out of it. Not, we're not faulted. We didn't do anything wrong. So nothing happened. So we approached the ministry that, are you still interested with this business? Will you go on? They said, well, we are facing financial challenges. We don't have a lot of money to do that. Then we said, okay. We, will, we wrote to them, have a copy of the letter that shows that the subsidiaries that are having this contract wrote to them that, well, if you don't have money to do it, then we cannot supply. And that has moved us, because we have passion for doing this business and solving problems, we went to Ecobank to discuss with them, and they look at how uh, noble the business of it, and then also how to solve the problem, gave us 10 million. And so naturally, the contract, not that we did not perform, because we agreed government didn't have money to pay, Number two is that, not that it was terminated, the contract elapsed by itself over the two years. If it was terminated, it could have terminated in 2017. No, because the contract was still valid. We didn't supply because government didn't have money. And so it naturally elapsed. That was chairman of Just One Group of Companies, Joseph Xiao A. Japan, interacting with senior journalists in Accra last night a quick point to make though as you may have heard him say um that since the robin the assembly's investigation which he was referring to um came to light nothing has been done about it of course we have been following up in this since the one year and five months uh, that manas azuri awuni head of investigations here at joy news put out in that investigation and what we know is that the district assembly's common fund and the local government ministry is withholding vital information from the attorney general's department and so the attorney general's department is incumbent and that is what is holding up the case um, that of course is a matter of um, is a matter of checking it can be checked at any time However, you're still watching Join News today. My name is Daniel Daze. And still to come, the government of Ghana has been taken on by the clergy for failing to protect men's gold customers, resulting in the loss of millions of CDs. We hear from President of the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council, Reverend Professor Paul Frimpon Manto, who wants the government to apologize to Ghanaians. Also, Bulldog makes a plea for Namwan to appear as his investments are also locked up. We'll be back after these messages. Thanks for staying with us. This is still Joy News Today. Now, President of the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council, Reverend Professor 
Paul Frimpong Manso wants government to apologize for failing to protect customers from men's gold. This comes on the heels of government's emphatic decision not to pay these aggrieved customers from taxpayers' funds. Now, speaking to Raymond Aqua on Upfront, the cleric chastised government for failing to stop men's gold and allowing the situation to fester. To me, we are now doing firefighting or reactionary method, and we need people who should have been proactive, who should have seen what was going to happen. The fact that they were warning, we, we have a statement in Cree, so okay. this man's go to was like a fire burning and this what has happened today was going to happen I see. and people have tolerated this to happen and it is sad I'm not blaming, I'm not saying that they can take the money from the government because they knew that the deal was bad from the beginning. Those who are complaining are not talking about when they were getting the 10% every month. Where were they sending this money? We don't even paying tax on this money. You know, it is sad. I feel for them as a pastor. It shouldn't have happened. Yes, the government doesn't owe anybody a CD. But the government cannot accept the blame for watching for this thing to happen. Do you agree the government should not spend or do anything to help the people? Oh, yeah. This country, you see, when we were even thinking about the National Cathedral, yes. people were crying. We, 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 we don't have schools. We don't have this. We don't have this. We don't have this. We don't have this. And why should we go and use money for this? And what about such a deliberate thing? And see how my government is already spending on the banks and other things, and we want government to come in. To me, if people, th if we, because if you do these things, if the, the government comes in, we give more rooms for such occurrences to happen ever now and then. The guy should be arrested, like what he said. His assets should be seized, and whatever we can retrieve from the assets or those who have is collaborated. We take it and share it for those who have invested. To have a penny is better than none. But just like customers who defended the company and its CEO months ago, there are those who still stand by him. One of them is artist manager at Xylophone Media, Lawrence Nana Isiama Hansen, popularly known as Bulldog. Now he has been asking his boss, Nam One, to return home. As he discloses, he and his family have been gravely affected because they also invested in the company. Wow. And then I pray I mean, be strong. You see what is happening? Be strong. People have gone through worse. I'm telling you, bro. People have gone through worse. And no matter what, we stand by you. No matter what. And if I were you, if true, if what I'm hearing is true about the... <laughs> the the arrest warrant. Yo. Show up. You will not be jailed. None of your people will be jailed. You did not defraud nobody. You have a good case. You were running your business until this present administration messed it up. If you felt that men's goals dealings were wrong or were dubious, there were better ways of going through going going at it when you started this campaign against men's gold you said you were protecting customers and their investments yes that's what government said that's the that's what government said today what is happening to the customers us what is happening to us we are being called greedy why are investments you came in to mess things up not to protect us you've messed things up and you've delayed our investments from coming to us. Wow. Yo, I, I think you, you guys did not read through the, the thing, the document you put out. Because that's a clear case. And up here, read through that document. They've just, the presidency has just confirmed that they had no business. I mean, BOG and SEC, you are not licensed with them. So they had no business coming into your, 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 
your 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 job. You know, in mess with our, 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 our time. Sad country, like I said before. Sad country. But as 7.7 billion people in the 194 countries around the world are looking for Namwan, his PRO, Niama Amatefio, says his boss has traveled abroad to work in order to repay his customers. Now, of course, we'll be bringing you more on this story, but in the meantime, the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources has revoked the license of Heritage Imperial Mining Company, which is prospecting for gold in the Ashanti region. This is to allow for investigations into the operations in the Apamprama Forest Reserve in the Amanse Central District. Sector Minister Kweku Asuman Chairman says a decisive action will be taken to determine the fate of the company after it emerged its concession may have been encroached upon by illegal miners. The minister is on the fact finding visit to the company's concession following anti Galamse clamped down by the Interministerial Committee on Small Scale Mining. The task force had found the company has been operating illegally for which it sees is several excavators, vehicles and other equipment. Preliminary investigations revealed out of three sites, only one was active, with the rest serving as camps for workers. On October 20, 2018, the Ministry of Lands granted prospecting licenses to Heritage Imperia, a large-scale mining firm in the Apramprama Forest, a hotspot for Galamse operations. Mr. Sumatrem's announcement comes as managers of Heritage Imperial demanded release of seized equipment and apology from government. The license of this company regarding Apamprama Forest will be revoked. And I intend to do so very early tomorrow morning. I will attach all the pictures to it. And it is going to serve as a deterrent to other companies that are doing similar things that we have not seen or that have that intention of doing same. And when the license is revoked, so such time that we are satisfied that they go by the rules and regulations of mining, we may not restore them to it. But where after thorough investigation, we come to know that they should come back, then they will be restored. I say this because the record we have on the paper indicates that some group of people or companies had been here earlier. Three years, four years ago, they were in this forest doing mining, of which we never saw. So if that report is correct, then it could be that Imperial Heritage might have come to inherit that debris. And that might have put them into this particular trouble. Where the converse holds, then they will be held liable for this. Mr. Sumatreme, however, dismisses reports. The presence of Heritage Imperial Company in the Forest Reserve is illegal. Already we have taken steps. That is why I can say that the record I have now indicates a company or a group of companies had earlier been to this forest, of which, yes, we were not aware. And their presence here was illegal. For them, their presence, the Imperial Heritage, their presence in this forest was legal, purposely for prospecting and not for mining at this stage. Meanwhile, the Forestry Commission says it has been taking stock of commercial value trees destroyed by the mining firm as mandated by law. Kojo Owusu Efriye is chief executive. My interest that I want the world to understand is that the company was within its own right. And as far as Forestry Commission is concerned, we have come to look at it. We have also, uh, uh, you know, uh, counted the economic trees that have been destroyed when we are going to surcharge them, uh, you know, uh, uh, accordingly. And that is what we do. But as soon as we realize that they've gone 
beyond the area that is granted to them, we will stop them because that is what we are supposed to do. From Kumasi, for Joy News, Oyment Area reports. Still have on Joy News today with me, Daniel Dazi. Now, earlier today, management and staff of the multimedia group met at the Victory Bible Church International here at Kokum, namely uh, for a Thanksgiving service to thank God uh, for his presence and his mercies in the past year. Here are some sights and sounds from that ceremony. I worship you. Indeed, an inspiring service we've had this morning. Still have on Joy News today with me, Daniel Dazit. I will call us next with business. And when he comes, he'll be telling you how pension experts are warning it may be difficult to raise 2 billion CDs from pension funds to recapitalize struggling local banks. How is that so? He'll tell you when he comes on. <laughs> 